Hello and welcome to this SQL Server Integration Services training video. In today's video, not only am I going to introduce you to the tools that we will be using, but I will also demonstrate how to import a flat file into a SQL Server database. Please note there are a few prerequisites for this particular lesson. The first is that you have SQL Server installed. It needs to be either the standard Business Intelligence or Enterprise Edition of SQL Server because they are the only installations that support SQL Server integration services. As part of that installation, you will need to install Business Intelligence Developer Studio if you are using a pre-2012 version of SQL Server. If you are using a 2012 version or newer, then you will need to install SQL Server Data Tools. For any version of SQL Server, you will be required to install Management Tools, the complete package, as well as Integration Services. You will also need to either create a new SQL Server database on your new installation or have access to an existing SQL Server database. You will also need a SQL Server or Windows Authenticated user on SQL Server, preferably a member of the SQL Server database owner role if possible. Finally, you will need a sample flat file with data in either a CSV or delimited text format. If you don't have any to hand, you can use an online sample data generator such as Mockaroo.com. So what will you learn in this lesson? First of all, you'll learn how to create a SQL Server Integration Services project using SQL Server Data Tools. You'll also have an overview of the basic SQL Server Data Tools features such as connection managers, tasks, and control and data flow design areas. How to create Integration Services tasks that provide your package with functionality. How to create connections to and from Integration Services packages to flat files and databases how to read data from flat files using flat file connections, and write data to a SQL Server database using database connections, how to execute a package from SQL Server data tools, how to connect to a SQL Server instance and view data in a SQL Server database using SQL Server Management Studio. To begin, if you'd like to open SQL Server data tools or Business Intelligence Developer Studio, depending on which version of SQL Server you are using, and you'll be presented with the following application. If you would then like to click New Project, this will open the New Project dialog window. On the left, you'll notice the installed templates for this SQL Server data tools installation. Click on the Integration Services project. Note you can change the name of the project if you wish, and you can change the location. Once you're happy with those changes, click OK to continue. So just to give you a quick overview of SQL Server Data Tools, on the left we have our toolbox. This contains the various tasks we can use in our SQL Server Integration Services package. In the design area, using the tasks from our toolbox, we can provide functionality to our Integration Services package. On the right, we have our Solution Explorer, this simply looks at all the files and folders that are associated with this particular project. You'll also notice in the design area we have a series of tabs. The two tabs we will be using today are the Control and Data Flow tabs. I'll explain more about them as we go along. Now we're going to create some Control Flow tasks. Because we're going to be importing data from a file into a database, we're going to make use of the Data Flow task. This moves data between sources and destinations and allows us to transform and cleanse that data. All we need to do is click and drag that onto our design area and that will create an instance of it. We could also use a bulk insert task for this. However, because we cannot transform data with a bulk insert task, we will not be using it today. Once you have dragged a data flow task to the design area, if you double click on that task, it will take us to the data flow design area for that particular task. Also notice our toolbox has changed. Now we have data transformation and cleansing tasks that we can use. So what you'll need to do is scroll down and we're going to build a connection between our package and our source data. So what we're going to use is the flat file source. Now source tasks are readers. They read information from a particular source into the package and drag an ADO net destination onto our design area. An ADO net destination and any other destination task for that matter are writers. We use them to write information to a destination. If you then click on the flat file source, you'll notice we have two arrows and the red X symbol. Now the two arrows, what are they? Well, the blue arrow indicates data flow. The red arrow also indicates data flow, however it is when an error has occurred while reading the data. 
and that will redirect those rows if we wish to some other task to handle the problem. The red X symbol in this case is a normal warning message that simply states that a connection manager has not been assigned to this flat file source. We'll be rectifying that problem shortly. Notice we also have the same with the ADO net destination and again it is because a connection manager has not been assigned to it. Notice also that the ADO net destination only has a red arrow. This makes sense since we cannot direct the data flow of a writer. We can simply handle any errors that occur when writing the data to a particular destination. So now we have our two tasks. Let's make a connection between them so we can direct our data from our flat file source to our destination. All you need to do is click and drag the blue arrow to our ADO net destination. Now let's create a connection manager for our sample data. So if you right click in the connection managers tab, click new flat file connection and you'll be presented with this connection manager editor. All we need to do then is browse to our sample data. In this particular case I've got a file on my desktop. If you have text columns in your sample data that have a particular qualifier around them, usually a double or single quote, then you can enter that here. Once you're happy with that, you will notice there is a warning message here. Columns are not defined for this connection manager. This is a normal warning message and is removed when we advance to the columns tab. Note in here we can see a preview window to see if the connection manager has read the data correctly and in this case it has. However, if you have problems with the column and row separations, then you can change the delimiters for those here. Once you are happy with that, if you click OK to continue, you notice we now have a flat file connection manager in our connection managers tab. So how do we assign that to our flat file source? We simply right click on the flat file source, click edit, and notice it has automatically selected the flat file connection manager. This is simply because it is the only flat file connection manager in this project. Obviously if we had created more than that, we'd have to select the right one. Also note that if you've not created the connection manager for the flat file at this point, you can click new here and go through the same process and create one. Once you're happy you have the correct flat file connection manager, click on the columns tab. Now in the columns tab we can include or remove columns from our source data. For example I can remove the IP address column, which means the IP address data would not be read by our flat file source. Also notice we can change the column name so we can refer to them by a different name in our package. Once you are happy with that, click OK to continue. You'll notice the red X symbol has disappeared because we have assigned a connection manager to this particular task. So now let's do the same for our ADO net destination. If you right click in the connection managers tab again, click new ADO net connection, and then click new and enter your server name where the SQL server is installed. Once you've done that, choose the appropriate authentication method. Obviously if you have a SQL server user then click that and enter the appropriate details, otherwise use Windows authentication. Now let's connect to a specific database on our SQL server instance. In this case I'm going to be using my test database. Once you're happy with that, click test connection to ensure it works and then click OK to continue. You'll notice now we have a data connection on the left. If we select that data connection and click OK, and we have our ADONet connection manager. Once again, right click on the task, click edit. You'll notice it has automatically selected our ADONet connection manager because it is the only ADONet connection manager available. Once again, we can click new here and go through the process of that connection manager creation if you have not already done so. So now what about the table we are inserting the data into? If you'd like to insert into an existing table you can, however in this case we're going to create a new table. So if we click new this automatically generates the SQL statement required to create that table. We can treat the SQL here like any other SQL statement. We can change the table name for example, or change this to create a view. We can also change the column names and data types. Once you're happy with your changes, click OK and this SQL statement will be immediately executed on the database. Now it's created our table, you'll notice once again we have a warning message. Map the columns on the mappings page. This is a normal warning message, so if we click the mappings tab, notice here we see the relationship between our flat file source and our database destination. This shows the column mappings for us. We could change those mappings using the drop down menus here to ignore input columns for example. Once you're happy with those changes, click OK to continue. 
The red X symbol has been removed and now our package is complete. So now we have a complete package, how do we run it? Well to run it from SQL Server Data Tools if we use the debug menu and click start debugging. This will begin executing our package. You'll notice our package execution has completed with success as you can see by the message down here and you'll also notice that next to each of the tasks in our package will have a green tick. This symbolizes that it is successfully executed that task. Also notice on the connection lines we can see the number of rows that were processed. We can also advance to this new tab, the progress tab. This gives us a breakdown of the individual tasks that have been performed while executing this package. Once you've finished browsing that, click on stop debugging. Now we've imported our data into the database, let's view that data. If you'd like to open the SQL Server Management Studio and you'll be presented with the following dialog window. Once again, if you select or enter the name of the SQL Server instance you'll be connecting to and choose the appropriate authentication method and then click connect. On the left hand side, navigate to the databases folder, select your database, then to the tables folder. In this case, I only have one table, which is the one I created using our package. If you right click on that, then click select top thousand rows. This will generate the SQL and execute it immediately for viewing the first thousand rows of data. As you can see here, our data has been successfully imported into our SQL Server database table. So thank you for joining me for this training video for SQL Server Integration Services. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next video, which looks at making our packages a little more dynamic.